good morning to all my dear students we are in the first unit of the indian constitution wherein we started our unit understanding what is the meaning of constitution we spoke about the definitions of indian constitution given by different authors or prescribed by different authors we also spoke regarding the importance or significance of indian constitution later we moved towards understanding the making of the constitution which led to the drafting of the indian constitution and in my yesterday's class i started a topic called as the silent features of the indian constitution or you can say the characteristics of indian constitution students in my yesterday's class i spoke about almost 15 features of indian constitution so there are about totally 31 features of indian constitution i am repeated i am repeating it again this question is very important from the examination point of view wherein you have chances to get this question in part b of your paper so students you are requested to write the headings properly and try to explain each feature in 2 to 3 lines so we had completed the 15th characteristic or feature of the indian constitution let's move to the 16th feature which speaks that the indian constitution has a parliamentary form of government students when i speak about parliamentary form of government it is that in which the executive executives are responsible for the working of the government in our country india the executives of india are being divided into two division students one division is the nominal and the other division is the real which means that in india students the nominal executive is the president of our country and he is elected he is responsible for the working of the government for a tenure or a length of service for almost 5 years or you can say for a period of 5 years but the second division which speaks about the real executive the real executive of our country is the prime minister along with the council of ministers so when i speak about the executive of our country students it is mainly divided into two nominal executive and the real executive the nominal executive is the president of the country and the real executive is the prime minister of the country along with the council of ministers so when i speak about a parliamentary form of government students these are the individuals who are collectively responsible for the working of the government now when i speak about the constitution of india students it also follows or it also provides a bicameral legislature which means that there are about two houses one is the upper house and the second one is called as the lower house which is also called as as rajya sabha and lok sabha when i speak about lok sabha students it contains or it has different representatives 
which are directly elected by the people of the country in one of the feature i explained you all what is direct election it means that there is a system of adult franchise wherein a person of the country once he attains the age of 18 years he has been allowed to vote has been allowed to get elect when i speak about rajya sabha the rajya sabha consists of different representatives of the states so when i speak about our country in the form of parliamentary government students we also have two houses upper house lower house also called as rajya sabha lok sabha when i speak about lok sabha here the people are the representatives are elected by the people by giving vote when i speak about raj sabha it consists of representatives which are of the state now when i speak about overall parliamentary form of government at the state level because a country is a union of states there is a constitutional head who is called as the governor of the sta state he is also been regarded as the head of the state but the real executive powers lies in the hands of the chief minister so no doubt there are other council of ministers for the state also hence this speaks about the essence of the parliamentary form of government so when you are explaining the parliamentary form of government you have to clearly indicate that there is a division of powers wherein the division of executives are done in our government wherein there are two powers or two executives one is called as the nominal head and the other one is called as the real head when i speak about the nominal head of the country president is being regarded as the nominal head of the country and the real head is the prime minister along with the prime minister we have different council of ministers also working towards the responsibility of the government later when i speak about parliamentary form there are two houses which is called as a bicameral system you have upper house and the lower house when i speak about the state level we have the governor of the state acting as the head of the state but also at the same time the executive powers lies in the hands of the chief minister and this speaks about the parliamentary form of the government so this is one of the important feature of indian constitution so let's move to the next feature which speaks about federal form of <coughs> political blended with unitary feature when i speak about blended form or students when i speak about the government it is such that now when i'm explain first i'll explain you all what is the meaning of federal form and what is the meaning of unitary form students when i speak about the federal form federal means the authority is a decentralized decentralized means delegated decentralized or a federal form means divided when i speak about unitary feature or a unitary form it means that the power or the authority of the government is centralized it all is only restricted only to one authority so when i speak about our constitution students it is a blend it is a mixture it is a combination of both we have central government who exercises the central authorities or powers at the same time students we have a federal form wherein the powers and authorities of the government are decentralized and the powers are given in the in the hands of the state government so we have a central government as well as state government so what happens is here when i speak about the indian constitution we have a blend of both we have central government 
as well as state government wherein the authorities and powers are being exercised now when i speak about federal system students wherein the power is decentralized or de uh, divided you can say that there is a centralization at the central authority in case of unitary system and when i speak about decentralization or you can say the federal form here the constitutional powers are divided among the national units and local units of the government so when i speak about federal system you have to remember that there is division delegation of powers and when i speak about unitary system everything is under control of the central government but students when i speak about our own constitution it is very much difficult to understand that whether we have to keep our constitution on the basis of or we have to divide our constitution on the basis of a federal system or totally a unitary system because we have dual government we have state central government as well as state government looking after the responsibilities authorities and powers of the government no doubt we have residuary powers given in the hands of the state government so that there is division of responsibility and there is good betterment or working of the government but what happens is our constitution empowers the central government to interfere in the matters of the state government or the places of the state and considers the state government as you can say a subordinate position or it considers the state to have a subordinate position so when i speak about this feature students our country has both we have a federal system as well as unitary system when i speak about federal system it means that the government is subdivided delegated when i speak about unitary system it is centralized the authority is been centralized so it is a combination of both we have central government as well as we have state government later we speak about the next feature that is emergency provisions students the constitution of our country provides three types of emergencies this has been a drafted in our constitution now the first type of emergency is national emergency this arises during the times of wars first emergency is the national emergency which usually arises during the times of wars the next type of emergency is the state emergency this arises students mainly when there is a failure of the constitutional machineries respective to the states when the citizens or the authorities are not abiding to the constitutional provisions at that time the state has the powers to declare emergency and the third type of emergency is the financial emergency when there is financial instability of the nation the constitution of a country states that they can declare emer financial emergency to the entire country and hence you have to remember that the moment the emergency is been declared most of the powers lies in the hands of the president only so students you have to remember that the president of our country declares emergency the world itself tells you that it cannot be declared on a daily basis it is only and only during the emergency the president of our country has the power to declare emergency in times of national emergency arising out of wars 
state of emergency arising due to the failure of the constitution and financial in emergency when there is financial instability at that point of time when the emergency has been declared all the powers lies in the hands of president of our country okay you have to remember only this next when i speak about creation of independent agencies students i already explained you all in the meaning or you can say the definition of indian constitution or you can say the making of the indian constitution there are basically three organs i told you legislature which makes the laws executive which execute the laws and judiciary which understands or interprets the law students apart from these three organs whenever there is a need to perform certain functions of the government there is creation of independent agencies in order to look or to perform the functions of the government so when there is a need apart from this three organs the constitution of our country lays down powers to create independent agencies in order to perform the various functions of the government this is only in times of need that these agencies independent agencies will look after the working of the existing government now example of independent agencies are union and the state public services public services is very important because they are the bodies of the government they are run by the government they are not the private agencies they are controlled they have give, been given powers they have been given authorities only and only from the government so the constitution of india gives special power for the creation of independent agencies next when i speak about the next feature that speaks about supremacy of the constitution students when i speak about the supremacy of the constitution the constitution of our india is superior to all the laws in my last classes i told you you have to imagine a tree wherein the constitution of india is the trunk of the tree nothing is superior to that of the constitution it has been regarded as the mother of all the laws any act which is enacted by the government has to be working in hand in hand or you can say has to be working in conformity of the constitution again when i speak about supremacy it is considered as the topmost and the superior law of the land it is the fundamental and the basic law of the land it consists of three organs mainly the legislature the executives and the judiciary when i speak about supremacy students the constitution of our india confers basic fundamental rights and duties towards the citizen and very importantly when i speak about the constitution it acts like a intermediary it acts like a regulatory function which helps us to understand or relate the relationship between a citizen of the country and the working of the government so when i speak about supremacy it is the top most or the superior law of the land it is considered to be the basic law of the land and no other law is as superior as constitutional law in our country next when i speak about impartial judiciary students when i speak about impartial judiciary means there is the third organ which is called as judiciary he that organ safeguards the rights and duties of a citizen when i speak about judiciary students they are considered 
to be safeguarding the rights of the citizen thus when i speak about judiciary it consists of various judges who interpret and understand laws and tries to give justice to each and every citizen of the country nobody is deprived in the hands of judiciary thus when i speak about impartial judiciary students the framers of the constitution thought of establishing this organ wherein no or other organ such as executive or legislature can interfere in the working of the judiciary students here when i speak about judiciary the constitution of our country gives specific provisions relating to appointment of the judiciary that is judges it also tells in detail the jurisdiction jurisdiction means the area in which they have to be appointed they have to carry out their responsibilities thus when i speak about judiciary it ensures that it is impartial no citizen is favored in the eyes of law and when i speak about the constitution students it provides the supreme court which is considered to be the top most court of our country which is also called as the apex court apex means the top most court wherein it has the highest authority to deal with the interpretation of laws that the judiciary also confers special rights to re review the validity of the parliament and it is mainly and mainly incorporated in the constitution to safeguard the citizens of the country and see to it that each and every citizen get justice next when i speak about the next feature which speaks about the establishment of panchayat raj students when i speak about establishment of panchayat raj it is somewhat a typical feature of indian constitution because initially this feature was not incorporated in the indian constitution it was during maybe the 73rd or the 74th amendment changed at that point of time the framers of the constitution thought that there is a need for establishment of panchayat raj and the constitution brought a golden dream wherein the father of the nation established this panchayat raj in our country so when i speak about panchayat raj system students democracy in our country you can say starts from the grassroots level means it starts from the basic level lowest level you cannot say it is lowest it is considered as the operational level to the highest that is the topmost level so when i speak about panchayat raj system it is considered as a beautiful feature wherein each and every citizens at the operational level is being heard is been taken care wherein this was considered as a golden dream of incorporating this panchayat raj and when i speak about the hierarchy that is from the lowest to topmost only our constitution has this power wherein we have at the grassroots level at the lowest at the operational level panchayat raj system being incorporated we have different hierarchies till the apex level that the topmost level okay now when i speak about the next feature which speaks about the single constitution for union and states now when i speak about single constitution students in my 
last slide i spoke about federal form of polity blended with unitary feature now students when i am speaking about single constitution of union and states students you should understand that our country india has a dual government wherein our country is a blend of both it is a blend of centralized authority as well as a blend of a decentralized authority wherein when i speak about government the authorities and powers lies in the hands of union government that is central government and when there is a need it lies or it residuates the power in the hands of the state government but even though we have a combination of both central as well as state government we have only one constitution that is a single constitution for union as well as state no doubt the powers the authorities are being divided centralized to see to it the to analyze the working of the existing government but when i speak about the constitution students we have a uniform constitution followed for the state government and we have uniform constitution followed for the central government so when i speak about constitution of india students we have only a single constitution followed by all the citizens of the country but usually when a country is adopted a federal system i told you what is the meaning of federal system when i speak about federal system the authority is been divided the authority is been decentralized in some countries it so happens that you have constitution which is divided into unions and the state authorities but when we speak about our own country india we follow a uniform constitution wherein the amending or the changing process of the constitution of india is same for both central government as well as state government so when i speak about this unique feature students we adopt a constitution which is uniformly followed to the central government as well as the state government next when i speak about the next feature wherein the center can change the name and the boundaries of the state when i am speaking about this feature students in our country india the parliament has the right to change the parliament has the right to alter the boundaries of the state the parliament has the right to change the name of the state or it also has the power to carve out one state out of other see this is a very unique combination wherein the parliament has the right wherein it can change the name of the state it can either add or subtract that is delete the boundaries of the state and very importantly even it can give a separate status to a state in fact this is done only in india students when i speak about changing the name wherein the center has the parts i can give you a example wherein andhra pradesh was carved out or has been given a separate status from the madras state now when i speak about changing the boundaries of the state wherein the center has the authority that is the central government has authority students it means that when i'm speaking 
solely regarding the boundaries of the state the center has the powers to increase the areas of the state they can diminish delete the areas of the state they can alter the boundaries of the state and they can also alter the names of the state but this is done only and only after the sanction given by the president of the country no doubt with a recommendation of different or consultation with different state legislatures or council of ministers but when i speak about indian constitution students this is considered to be a very important feature wherein there is a need, when there is a need the central government in coordination with the president of a country along with the state legislatures or you can say with consultation of state legislatures can change the name can alter the boundaries of the state change name means they can give a separate name or a separate status to a state they can either add different districts to a state or they can also diminish hence this is a special feature of the indian constitution the next feature which speaks about special status to jammu and kashmir students when i speak about special status to jammu and kashmir students you have to understand that there is a princely state called as the jammu and kashmir wherein when i speak about special status students the constitution of india according to a separate agreement had been given a special status to jammu and kashmir but it so happened that recently they have been included in the territory of our country okay now let's move to the next feature that speaks about bicameral system or a bicameral legislature students when i speak about bicameral legislature i told you that our parliament is been divided into two houses the first one is lok sabha and the second one it's raj sabha so when i speak about the constitution of our country students it has provided a separate legislature to each state but regarding the organization of legislature students the internal states have the right to follow their own principles such as some states follow unicameral legislature or some follow bicameral legislature unicameral means one house when i speak about bicameral means two houses but when i speak about our indian constitution as a whole we follow a bicameral legislature when i speak about the term bicameral it means that we have two houses which is called as the upper house or lower house upper house and the lower house the first house is called as the upper house students which is called as vidhan parishad or it is also called as legislative council and the second house is called as the lower house which is called as the vidhan sabha or legislative assembly so when i speak about bicameral system you have to understand that our country follows a legislature wherein it accepts two houses upper house and the lower house 
the upper house is called as the vidhan parishad and the lower house is called as the vidhan sabha next when i speak about the next feature wherein there is a division of par students very importantly you have to understand that the constitution of our india provides a detailed list wherein there is a division of parts between the center and the state government when i speak about the division of par students there are special residuary parts which are only given to the central government and there are some residual parts which are only given to the state government the central government has the authority to interfere in the working of the state government but in case of the constitution of india in case of seventh schedule the constitution of india provides specially three lists it provides the union list it provides the state list and it provides concurrent list when i speak about the union list it consists of 97 subjects wherein it speaks about union authorities or union powers or what is the area wherein they have to exercise powers when i speak about the state list it consider it considers the subjects of the state list and what is the area in which they have to confer their rights and exercise their powers when i speak about concurrent list it is a combination or blend of both central list as well as state list here what happens is when i speak about this concurrent list it consists of both union as well as state here there are special subjects on which they have to exercise their power they have to exercise their jurisdiction in which they are working and there is special div division of work next when i speak about the next feature which speaks about affirmative action students when i speak about aff affirmative action you have to understand that the meaning of the word affirmative affirmative means positivity being optimistic being very much positive so the constitution of our india takes positive steps in order to see to it that there is betterment of the country it takes several positive steps to look after the welfare of the country it helps to provide support to the weaker sections of the society it provides several reservations to the minorities it provides maybe some reservations for the legislatures or for the governmental jobs and our country has incorporated this in affirmative action to see to it that the state and the union both ensures that there is betterment or welfare of the country wherein we have good economical and social status and we try to uplift the weaker sections of the society hence this is considered as a important feature of indian constitution wherein the constitution looks after the betterment and the working of the entire indian constitution and also it takes several steps to uplift the weaker and the minorities among the country and see to it that all the citizens of the country are being safeguarded the last feature which speaks about recognition of hindi as an official language students when i speak about this feature the constitution recognizes hindi as an official language prior to it english was been considered as a official language of our country but with amendments now 
Hindi has been regarded as the official language of our country. So when I speak about the features of the Indian constitution students, you have to understand that there are about 31 features wherein I have directly from 26th point jumped to 29th point wherein I will just explain in two to three words what are the other two features of the constitution. Students, you can add one more feature to it wherein you have special integrated judicial system. When I speak about special integrated judicial system, I have jumped to this point because I have already explained it in terms of impartial judiciary. When I speak about single integrated judicial system students, I already told you that we have a Supreme Court acting as the apex court of our country. And we also have high courts wherein in the state we have the topmost court which is called as the high court of our country and below it we have different lower courts working. And one more point which speaks about 28th point that is special parts of central over state. I have not repeated this point because students when I speak about special parts of center over state. I told you already it has been repeated since I told you we have a blend of both centralized government and decentralized government. The centralized authority has a power to interfere in the working of the state government. So these two points I have not been included. Other points I have already explained in the detail. Okay. So with this I complete the important features of Indian constitution. If you want I will add these points in your presentations when I will be giving you all the presentations. But students, this is one of the important questions from the examination point of view. You have about 31 points. You have to explain each point according to the marks and elaborate it in just two or three lines. I have taken about two classes just to explain the features of Indian constitution. In our next class, we are going to start with the preamble of the constitution. With this, I conclude my today's class wherein I explained in detail regarding the features of Indian constitution. Thank you. Have a good day.